Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Bulk Nice coming at you with the Marvel Legends, Spider-Man Homecoming Series, Vulture, Build-A-Figure Wave, Tombstone Figure Review. Let's do it. This ain't for no scalper. You a scalper? The fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel Legends, imports, many mates the I'm fucking with. Hype beast we know about you. Stay buying figs, don't. And taking a look at the artwork on the right side, you can see a picture of Tombstone. And taking a look at the artwork on the left side, and you can see a picture of Beetle. So Beetle and Tombstone share the same box, same bio. The bio reads, when the battle for justice is underway, artificial enhancements make these villains stronger, faster, and even more of a threat. Three Spider-Man Homecoming figures in the wave and four comic base figures. You will need all seven if you want to have a complete vulture. If you so want to look at Tombstone out of the package. And yo, I like this figure a lot. Uh, this has been a long time coming. A lot of people have been fiending for a Tombstone. I'm loving that Marvel Legends is rounding out a lot of Spider-Man's rogues gallery. He's got some of the best villains. Probably only matched or topped by maybe Batman as far as villains go uh but yeah i'm really digging this this figure let's look at what he comes with real quick no real accessories of his own no extra head no extra hands he just comes with another one of the propellers for vultures wing apparatus lonnie lincoln aka tombstone new york city resident actual fellow harlemite guy from harlem uptown uh, black guy that was born an albino so because of that he was kind of teased and ridiculed as a youth and I guess that made him kind of lash out and turn to a turn to a life of crime because really inside he's just sad and lonely but um, originally he didn't have any um, any powers but through some some type of uh, uh, mutation from some type of experimental gas he was able to develop superhuman strength and durability and stamina and uh, he can uh, lift quite a bit of weight and he's pretty powerful he's bulletproof uh, he's a strong guy take a look at that mug he actually filed his teeth down to points and uh, you don't want to get bit, you don't want to get bitten by this guy but I think they did a really nice job on this head sculpt he looks really cool I'm really happy to finally have a have a tombstone here uh, they did a very good job. It's good to be rounding out our underworld of crime in the Marvel Universe and Spider-Man's world. We definitely still in dire need of a Kingpin and a couple of other characters. I really wasn't a big fan of this choice of Deco, but it does look pretty good. And this is definitely a look that he sported in the comic books. It is comic accurate. I probably would have liked to, to have seen him in maybe just a short sleeve shirt, maybe sort of similar to how he looked in the Spider-Man animated series or in a suit. But I'm not 100% mad at this now that I do have it in hand. But he's got the kind of 70s deco going on here with the collar and the open chest. And uh, this belt here is sculpted. He's got some parts here that are sculpted and that are separate from the actual mold like these uh wristbands and these bands here i'm not really a fan of that that they move you got to kind of push them up for them to stay in place but the buckles are painted and it's just mostly black his skin is sort of like a, a hue of light blue almost like baby blue i don't know what you would even call this really i wouldn't even call it blue it's more like gray it's almost like a gray with a little hint of blue my girl says it's periwinkle, whatever that is. Look that up. So, but, you know, it looks good. I don't really like the way the chest and the neck kind of look separate here at this at this point. But overall, it looks good. And like I said, it is pretty accurate. Now, to I do comic. believe that I remember uh, Dwight or Jesse or one of those guys over at Legends saying that this was a new mold. Um, it does look very similar to the Hyperion mold as far as the legs and the arms. But I can tell you for sure that the chest is not as wide as it is on that Hyperion mold so I do believe that the chest is different obviously this is new sculpting uh, but you get a decent range of motion the head will look down just about that far it'll look up that far hindered a little bit by the collar uh, but the head does pop off you can remove the head it'll turn left and right not hindered too much by the collar I mean his 
Uh, chin is going to hit it at some point, but if you really wanted it to do a full 360, you could. This is not as hard. This plastic is kind of hard, but it is. You can see it's moving just a little bit. But anyway, shoulders on a ball joint, they're going to go up just about that far. Full 360, upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbow, swivel on the wrist and a hinge. Uh, ab crunch is going to go forward that much, going to go back that much. It'll turn left and right at the waist. T-joint at the pelvis, legs come up that far, legs go back that far, split looks like that, upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, rotation at the upper boot, you get a hinge and a nice deep pivot on the foot. So very standard articulation for the males of, arti of uh, Marvel Legends. Usually they, you know, go to distance with the males. It's the females that are usually lacking. But quick size comparisons, you have the standard suited body that we've gotten from Marvel Legends so far. And you got Chameleon there on the left, another one of the underworld figures here. And you can see that uh, Tombstone is a pretty big guy, definitely towering over Chameleon. And you got Beetle on the right from the same way. You got him next to his daughter, the female Beetle, the current Beetle. Uh, on the left and uh, pizza spotty on the and right here he is next to that Hyperion mold We have Sentry here on the left and like I said that chest is larger on that mold you can see uh, The chest and even the arms may be just a little bit smaller on uh, Tombstone's buck here and then we got Colossus from the Warlock Builder figure wave on the right who is larger so uh, sort of like a mid medium size big dude buck for and then here he is next to some little guys. We've got the Percy Jackson movie, Percy Jackson figure here on the left. This was something that I picked up many years ago. People always ask me about this figure and where it came from. I actually painted his hair blonde because I wanted him to be a Phobos, Ares' son in a display. And to my surprise, this figure is going for like a thousand dollars online or something like that right now. So I always hold on to this guy. But yeah, uh, it's not a legend, but just again, just giving you some size comparison. Then we have uh, Wolverine here on the right. And just for shits and giggles, I got a couple of the WWE uh, suited bodies here because I want to try to pop off this guy's head and see how it will look on some of those bodies. But I believe this is the biggest body on the left that came from a Triple H suited Triple H figure, if I'm not mistaken. And then this one on the right is from, help me out in the comments, I can't remember his name. He's like a manager or something like that. And then on the left, we got Wonder Man and another suited body from WWE. I forget who this guy was too. I probably popped off the head and threw out the head long ago. But I've used this body to put the hammerhead uh, head onto this body. I like the bow tie for, for hammerhead for this body. I got this in like off of eBay. Um, a couple years ago and whoever the seller was they must have been a smoker or something like that because when they sent the figure it smelled it reeked of cologne and I guess they were trying to mask the, the smell that has absolutely nothing to do with this review but you know I go off on a tangent like that sometime but whoever that seller was I hate you I hate you because this figure still smells like cologne to this day all right, moving so right along. You can see that this probably would work, but I don't have a, a neck peg on here. <laughs> I had a mic sticking in there, but if I had the neck peg on there, it would sit okay. Although uh, these two body types are not really the same, you could finesse it if you were to paint up the hands and the neck on this if you feel like going through all of that to have a suited uh, tombstone here. Uh, but I feel like the proportions are okay. You would just need that neck peg so the head can sit. Tombstone right. definitely came out nice. I think this figure is boss. This is a beast figure. I think they picked the right mold. Uh, you know, it's a it's a new mold. I think they did the right thing. It was some debate back and forth. People were saying uh, maybe it should have been on a Wrecking Crew mold or it should have been on Hyperion. No, I think they I think they did the right thing here, and I think this is going to be a highly sought after figure. This is one that people have been wanting for quite a bit of time. So. Uh, this is one I would highly recommend. Don't pass up on this guy if you see him in the house. Don't forget to participate in our donations drive to snag yourself. To try to snag the Ultimate Spider-Man and Vulture 2-pack, you can uh, donate as little as 5 bucks or throw down as little as 5 bucks or as much as 20 to get in. You only have until this coming Tuesday uh, to do that. Stay tuned for the Cosmic Spider-Man review, which should be up next. And uh, as always, rate, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.
crispy. 